गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू क्यू वन एफ आई ट्वेंटी फाइव अर्निंग कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल ऑफ मुथुत माइक्रोफिन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक द मैनेजमेंट टीम ऑफ मुथुत माइक्रोफिन फॉर गिविंग अस दी अपॉर्चुनिटी टू होस्ट द कॉल फ्रॉम द मैनेजमेंट टीम वी हैव मिस्टर थॉमस मुथुत एम डी मिस्टर सदाफ साइद सी ईओ मिस्टर प्रवीण सी एफ ओ मिस्टर उदीश उल्लास सी ओ ओ एंड मिस्टर रजत गुप्ता ए वी पी इन्वेस्टर रिलेशन I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Sadaf Said for his opening remarks. Post this, we will open the floor for Q and A. Uh, thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, very good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to the earnings call for the quarter one for Mutus Microfin. Uh, I would like to take this call uh, in three stages. Uh, I'll be talking upon on three topics. One is the prevailing macro environment and uh, the challenges that uh, the industry is facing. Uh, key steps at Matut Microfin that we have taken to counter these challenges, and then I'm going to focus upon the Matut Microfin performance during the quarter. Uh, so first of all, uh, the prevailing macro environment, as you are aware, uh, the quarter one. Uh, had uh, numerous challenges. Uh, one was the uh, heat wave. Uh, India recorded uh, some of the highest temperature in most of the uh, northern region. Uh, the temperature went up to 50 degrees, uh, which created challenges for uh, conducting center meeting and also uh, for the relationship officers to visit their branches. And it had also an impact on the uh, economic activity of our borrower. Uh, Secondly, uh, most importantly, there were general election held in the uh, first quarter. So uh, during the uh, larger part of the Q1, there were a general election across the country, uh, which has an impact on the uh, ability to conduct center meeting, gathering large number of people, and also carrying cash uh, uh, when you collect. So that had an impact on overall activity and also on the disbursements. Uh, there was also uh, an underlying issue due to uh, the elections which were prevailing. There was activism. Uh, there were Karza Mukti Andolan, uh, which had disturbed several parts of uh, the northern territory where uh, collections were impacted mildly. Uh, Punjab was affected rather severely, but uh, other uh, districts were affected mildly. So in southern states, there was not much of an impact of such activity. Uh, however, in south, uh, monsoon also hit uh, on time, and uh, there were excessive rain noticed in certain regions. And excessive rain creates a problem of conducting center meeting, and also uh, the mobility of the staff gets restricted. So these were the challenges uh, which were there uh, during the first quarter. Having said that, uh, your company has taken prudent steps. Uh, and uh, we have put together a strategy which uh, addresses uh, most of these challenges. Uh, considering the environment, first of all, uh, we have uh, moderated our disbursement. So for the quarter, we disbursed around 2,204 crores worth of loan and maintained our AUM at 12,210 crores. Uh, we also took a strategy of further diversifying our portfolio. So we have made inroads into two new states, which is Andhra and Telangana. Telangana already is operative. Andhra, we have already put together branches and we have plans to expand there. Uh, with this entrance, uh, South contributes around 51% of the portfolio uh, for the company. Uh, and it's a more evolved market. Uh, it has seen more cycles, and it is also a market where uh, the cash flows of the customers are better, and it has not seen disturbance from extraneous events uh, during the entire period. So that is our strategy to focus on this market. We continue to focus on our core strength market, and meanwhile, we'll continue to add uh, more customers. Uh, another strategy that we have adopted is to focus on our uh, existing customers. So if you look at our disbursement, uh, the share of existing customers in disbursements have gone up and share of new to credit customers have gone down. While we continue to open new branches and new area and uh, look at customers who are uh, uh, have lesser exposure to microfinance or no exposure, but uh, our main focus would be to re retain our good customers or ensure that they get adequately uh, funded whenever they are needed. Uh, 
during this quarter, we further strengthened our credit operations. So one of the themes that I have noticed across the industry, now people are talking about uh, more evolved credit underwriting. Um, at Matut Microfin, uh, we have always been prudent about it. And we have always believed in uh, underwriting at the front end level, at, also at the SO level. So we have a 1600 member strong team. Uh, which is uh, stationed at each of the branch. Uh, we have one credit officer who is responsible for underwriting the loan. It is very important to capture the uh, obligation of the customer correctly. So this uh, uh, credit officer uh, basically does this activity, which allows us to underwrite better and also understand the customer better, take all the obligation into consideration at the household level. And if there is any negative uh, comments coming out from the field, we are able to capture better. So that is paying out well. Uh, we have heard a lot of the other industry players also talking about uh, now starting up with the credit vertical, but uh, your company has been in the lead and we have established this team uh, already and uh, they are well wide machine and they are doing a good job and uh, the impacts of this would be seen uh, in few coming days. Uh, further, uh, as a prudent policy, uh, considering that uh, this uh, environment plays a role, uh, there are uh, natural calamity events, especially during the monsoon season. There are floods and uh, like rain, excessive rain. So we have taken a natural calamity insurance. This is again a, one of the unique uh, preposition that Matut has, and we have offered this to uh, most of our clients. And this also safeguards us from any sort of uncertainty. Uh, the benefit of this was noticed uh, during the Tamil Nadu recent floods. Uh, in eight districts, there were a lot of floods during December. Uh, there were 25,000 borrowers which were impacted, but uh, thankfully because of this uh, product, uh, your portfolio had no impact. We were able to get all the collections and we were able to get all the claims. So there was no impact in Tamil Nadu for our uh, uh, company. Uh, moreover, uh, we have also uh, strengthened our analytics team. Uh, we have uh, uh, tied up with uh, a company called Synaptics. Uh, we are building a predictive model. We are, ab we are able to identify customers who show a trend that there is a possibility of them becoming delinquent or there is a possibility of them flowing into a higher bucket. So we have a, a specific collection strategy for that. So we are uh, working proactively to ensure that our collections are on time. Thirdly, and more importantly, we have a strong collection team. Uh, we have a risk containment unit of around 230 people who are looking at uh, loans which are uh, 60 plus or 90 plus. The team was essentially focused on 90 plus, but uh, during the quarter, uh, realizing it's important that we address the customer early, we have also allocated 60 plus cases to this team and we have seen good results in collection. As a consequence of all of these initiatives, uh, which are unique to Matut, the credit team, a natural calamity insurance, a dedicated collections team, uh, our underwriting models, scorecards uh, we are using, and now uh, this predictive analytics in terms of detecting an early uh, a default. Uh, this has all resulted in better performance and better uh, output for our uh, business. And as a consequence, uh, our results have been better. I think the total income uh, this branch, this quarter has grown by 33.5% uh, from 480 crores uh, year or year. 480 crores in uh, Q1 of FY24 to 641 crores of Q1 of FY25. Net interest income has grown by 36.6% year on year from uh, 280 crores a year ago in Q1 to 383 crores. Our uh, TPOP is uh, grown up by 50.4% uh, from uh, 148 crores to 223 crores. Uh, this actually shows that overall the portfolio yields are improving. Uh, our AUM has increased by 21.6% uh, year on year from 10,038 crores uh, to 12,210 crores. Uh, most importantly, our NIMs have increased by 123 bips uh, from 12.05% uh, in Q1 last year to 13.29% in Q1 this year. 
as a as a result, our PAC has increased by 18.3 percent uh, from 96 crores uh, in Q1 FY24 to 113 crores this year. Uh, most importantly, uh, we have had a good control on our uh, portfolio quality. Our GNPAs have gone down by 65 bits from 2.75% in Q1 last year. It has gone down to 2.30% in Q1 FY25. Uh, if you look at uh, quarter on quarter also, as compared to the last quarter, uh, the GNPAs have gone down from 2.29% to 2.1%. Our uh, net NPAs have also gone down by 38 bits from 1.09% uh, in Q1 last year to 0.71 in Q1 FY25. Uh, we have also made effort uh, to report NPAs as a net of phase 3 provisions as compared to and as a net of the whole provision. If you look at uh, the number that we had reported last quarter, which is net of the whole provision, uh, the net NPA stands at 0.23% in Q1, which was 0.51% uh, for Q1 last year. And as uh, Q1 QS will com compare, it's 035 for the last quarter. More importantly, uh, we have been able to manage the study flow of uh, uh, capital uh, in terms of debt. And uh, we have been able to negotiate on our uh, term loans, which are existing, as well as uh, the newer borrowing that we are borrowing. So our cost of fund has come down by 15 bits from 11.22% in Q1 FY24. It has come down to 11.07 in Q1 FY25. We expect this trend to continue, and uh, we will get better benefits uh, in the coming quarters, and we will be able to bring down this cost. Uh, during the quarter, uh, we expanded our operations and we opened 54 branches. Uh, we, uh, the branch count today stands at uh, 1,562 as compared to 1,508 at the end of the financial year. Uh, we have a strong liquidity position. Uh, we have a good amount of cash, uh, 1,070 crores of unencumbered cash on our balance sheet. Apart from that, uh, we have more than 3,000 crores of sanction in hand, which we can draw down. Uh, also, the capital adequacy situation is quite robust. Our capital adequacy uh, improved from 29% uh, to 30.29% as of today. Uh, some of the new initiatives during the quarter, which will uh, play out in the coming quarters, uh, which are uh, we have uh, got a corporate agency license from IRDA. Uh, we already have uh, multiple insurance products which we are offering to our customers. Uh, this insurance license will also allow us to customize products to suit to our customers' need and uh, get better quality of products and it will also help the company to earn some revenue. Uh, we are already in talks with uh, several insurance companies and in firming up the tie-up as a, a corporate agent. So this will definitely add to the bottom line of the company. Uh, we have also entered during the quarter into a co-lending agreement with the largest bank in the country, State Bank of India. Uh, the aim is to uh, empower the microfinance borrower and this will also allow us to continue uh, and, uh, a free flow of disbursement to our customers. Uh, as there is a credit line which is available from SBI, which is on a consistent basis, uh, we can continue to do on a day-to-day uh, -day basis or a month-to-month -month basis, and our CLM2, we are able to do this transaction. Uh, during the quarter, uh, just recently, we have uh, cut the rates. Uh, 35 bits uh, rates have been cut uh, to benefit our borrower because of the efficiencies that we have brought in. Our incremental borrowing rate has gone down to around 10.34% and we have passed on certain benefits to our uh, customers and that is reflected in the 35 bits cut that we have announced for our customers. Uh, also, I would like to inform that we had a, a very good response to our ECB. Uh, we had a follow-on green shoe portion uh, which we issued to our uh, uh, subscribers, investors who were interested in uh, giving debt. So apart from the $75 million that we had raised uh, in the last financial year, there was additional $38 million which, is, uh, which were raised uh, during this period. 
uh, and total ECB uh, through this route stands at around 113 million. And this we feel is a very uh, effective way of uh, borrowing because this gives us access to long term debt. It is also uh, very competitive and cost effective uh, because we are able to hedge. Uh, the company uh, adopts a policy of a fully hedge borrowing. We hedge our uh, 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 currency as well as the interest rate, so there is no uh, kind of surprise for the company. So it becomes kind of a fixed rate for us. And it's a three year period kind of a three plus three months uh, year kind of a borrowing. And it allows us to utilize that uh, uh, loan for a multiple kind of uh, lending that we do. So it's a very efficient way of borrowing. Our long term strategy has always been uh, to uh, diversify our sources of mix. Uh, so this is in line with that. Uh, we will be doing more such borrowings, which will allow us to uh, get our cost of fund down and also allow us, allow us to have access to a longer time debt, which will also improve the ALM situation of the company. With this, uh, I would like to mention that the company maintains this earning uh, growth and also projections uh, which we have given out. Uh, we have uh, consistently kind of continued to improve on our uh, performance and the guidance that we have given, we hold on to that guidance. Uh, definitely this was a uh, challenging quarter. Uh, but uh, with the prudent strategies that we have been put in place, uh, definitely the coming quarters would be much more quarters. There is a seasonal uh, impact also during Q1, usually for uh, microfinance industry, quarter one is a slow quarter. Uh, this quarter we had multiple uh, challenges, but uh, still we have been able to de deliver good results. And uh, we hold on to our uh, guidance and we think that we should be able to uh, definitely deliver. I think that's all from my side. I'll, uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take our first question from the line of Subranshu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good morning. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, just want to understand uh, the uh, situation of over leverage in our customers. Uh, what proportion of our customers have more than uh, five loans or what proportion of our customers have a gold loan or a personal loan uh, which is not getting you know uh, uh, captured in the uh, SRO guidelines thanks uh, thanks uh, uh, thanks to branch for asking that question I think uh, that's an important kind of an information uh, uh, first of all I would like to mention that uh, during the quarter apart from uh, the company taking the initiative to ensure that uh, the portfolio quality remains robust the SRO has also taken initiatives in terms of introducing certain uh, guardrails and guidelines both the SROs uh, uh, MPIN and uh, Southern have issued guidelines for responsible lending and ensuring that the portfolio remains. Uh, to answer to your question, uh, Subrachu, in our portfolio, if you look at uh, more than four lenders, that is us plus four, uh, the uh, number is 6.94%. Uh, if you look at MFI portfolio, and if you look at uh, the whole universe, and I, I must tell you that uh, your company has been prudent in, in uh, taking uh, into consideration the credit bureau report not only for the borrower but for the co-borrower and also we take consumer credit uh, uh, reporting also. We don't only look at microfinance reporting, we also look at consumer credit. So that percentage, uh, uh, more than four, if you take the consumer loans also non-MFI universe, uh, that is around 14%. So I think uh, this is uh, definitely under control uh, and uh, def uh, we are ready with the guidelines that have been put in place by uh, both the SROs. 
uh, they have been already put into the systems and uh, we have a better uh, kind of a position in terms of managing those guidelines and ensuring to continue to do uh, disbursement to good customers. Understood. And the second question is around assessing the household income. Uh, what all components do we take? Do we take the uh, leading male and female members of the family or are we taking an adult child also into the uh, household income? How do we assess the uh, uh, household income? Because I don't think there is any guidelines either from the regulator or from the SRO to assess the household income as such. Uh, and the uh, next question is, how do we look at the credit cost uh, in FY25 going forward? Thanks. Yeah, so uh, I think I'll uh, take the second question first. Uh, as I mentioned that uh, we have maintained on our guidance. Uh, we have given a guidance of around 1.7 to 1.9% of credit cost. Uh, Q1, we have taken a lot of upfront uh, uh, cost wherever we uh, wanted that there was certain uncertainty. We have taken that debt already. Uh, we are sticking to this guidance. Uh, this can go to from 1.9 to 2% maybe. Uh, but uh, there would be no further shocks, uh, provided there are no new events that come in our way. I think uh, we hold on to that guidance. Uh, as far as uh, the income assessment is concerned, I think you're right. Uh, right now, uh, there are guidance notes, uh, as in like uh, 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 guidance given by Southern uh, that how to income to be calculated, but there are no strict regulations on that. Uh, that's why I think the importance of a credit officer becomes very, very critical. And that's why uh, Madhut Microfin is better positioned to assess the income of our uh, borrower. And we take into consideration the income of the applicant as well as co applicant. And uh, we take into consideration also the income of any other third members of the family who are a part of that family unit. And uh, we not only go by what uh, the customer has declared, we have a method of triangulating the income where we take a customer declared income, uh, we take income calculated by imputed margin that we have built in, and then uh, we calculate the income uh, which has been reported to the credit bureau. And we take uh, lowest of the three as the income uh, for uh, calculating the eligibility. So it's a very prudent policy and uh, we do personal discussion with every customer in assessing the income. We don't only go by what they are reporting on a peak season. We go, we ask them what is your income on a peak season, what is on a daily basis, uh, what is on an off season kind of an income and the average of that, we take that as an income. Understood. Thank you and look forward to future courses. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Next question is from the line of Nitesh from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So first uh, question is on collection trends. So in Q1, we have reported a collection efficiency of 96%. Uh, how is the collection trends uh, in the month of July? Yeah, uh, thanks uh, Nitesh for asking that question. So in our presentation, if you look at uh, we have also given collection efficiency as a breakup of each state. So if you look at uh, southern states, uh, the collection efficiency uh, remains better. So around 98-99% uh, collection efficiency still remains in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, uh, Karnataka. Uh, northern states, uh, though we have seen a tip in the collection efficiency uh, during the Q1, and uh, that trend for July was still there, uh, especially the places which were affected by rains and other uh, um, issues. So overall collection efficiency has uh, definitely uh, uh, improved uh, in southern states, but uh, if you look at overall it's around 96% for July because of excessive rains. There are no other issues, but we think these are very, very transitionary and it's seasonal. Every year, if you look uh, at this trend, uh, July and August is a period where the collection efficiency dips a little bit because of rain, and then it comes back very quickly. So, uh, August has been a lot better. Sure. And secondly, the, uh, uh, what are the trends on Kaza Mukti Abhyan as, as that uh, movement stops, or it is still going on in pockets uh, in North India? 
yeah so that um, majority of that activity has stopped uh, it was uh, almost linked with the election activity that was uh, going on during that period in q1 so now uh, we don't have too much of activism uh, in punjab of course uh, there are certain districts there are four districts which are affected Uh, they remain affected, but there is no further deterioration of those portfolio. In fact, some of the collection have started coming in, so we are seeing improvement in collections there. So, uh, to summarize, there is no additional impact from the Darza Mukti anymore. Sure, sure. And then lastly, uh, what is the growth guidance for the full year? Uh, given that uh, there is slight stress in the uh, in the sector, and M Phil has also changed the underwriting guidelines. Uh, so, what will be the growth guidance uh, for FI25? Yeah, so uh, we have looked at those guidance very carefully, uh, and we have also assessed that what would be the impact on our throughput uh, if we go by whatever sourcing that we were doing, and we implement those guidelines into that. The impact is around uh, 11% on our portfolio in a sense that what we were processing. So, we were processing around two lakh loans. Uh, a month, uh, so 10%, 11% of those loans will get rejected because of the uh, newer guidelines. But uh, as I mentioned, that our focus is on um, retaining the existing customers. I think because of this full lender cap norm, it would become even more important for us to ensure that we uh, remain uh, existence with our ex existing customer and the good customers. So that is our strategy. Uh, we will continue to focus on those. Uh, our uh, guidance remains steady. Uh, we still maintain that uh, we will continue to grow at around 45% for the full financial year. Uh, the quarter one is usually a slow quarter. Uh, anyway, uh, we have been able to navigate that uh, very well. And we have put together a strategy how we want to run because one of the strategy that we have done is uh, we will have a, a centralized uh, uh, kind of uh, pre-approved campaign where uh, we can identify our good customers and uh, feed that data to our uh, relationship officer that these are the customers who are ready for conversion and subsequent cycle and uh, they can be disbursed if they are interested in taking a loan. So this will ensure that the good customer will remain with us, and this will also ensure uh, that uh, the policies that have been recently introduced are effectively and uh, prudently implemented. Because this is not only a credit underwriting issue; this is also a compliance issue. So we don't want uh, like any subjective call to be taken at the branch level. Uh, still, the, these guidelines are very new because it will take certain time to, for people to understand and be trained on these guidelines. So that's the strategy. And on the guidance, uh, we are holding on to it as of now. Uh, barring any other challenge that we face, uh, uh, which we can't predict at the moment, uh, we will continue to hold on to our guidance. And then lastly, uh, there is an ERC transaction in the in this quarter. Uh, so the loans that were sold to IRC were they return of loans or they were the loans from the NPA pool? Uh, they were NPA pool, but uh, we analyzed those portfolio as we mentioned uh, in certain portfolio which was affected in Punjab. So there was uh, we have a very limited uh, exposure in Punjab, uh, around 31 crore in those four districts. So the whole of Punjab is not affected. There are four districts around Amritsar which are affected. So 31 crore portfolio was there, out of which around 19 crore uh, we had written off and uh, uh, around 12 crore was there, which we have sold to ARC. Similar portfolio, uh, which is uh, beyond 180 days, uh, not yet written off, uh, but we didn't see any uh, traction in collection. So those uh, uh, portfolio we have sold off. Uh, we have done a transaction of 150 crores of uh, ARC uh, and at a valuation of 45%. And uh, in the past experience has been really good, so we don't see any challenge there. We have seen collection consistently coming out of our right of pool as well as NPA pool. Uh, our uh, RCU team, which is focusing on 90 per plus collection, they collect almost around 12 crores out of this pool every month, uh, which uh, if you look at a breakup, around one and a half crore is from the right of pool and balances from the uh, overall uh, 90 plus collection over this. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. That's it on my side. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.
before we take the next question, would like to remind participants to press star and one to ask a question. We'll take our next question from the line of Mayank Mistri from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, uh, we have taken a 35 weeks cut recently, and uh, I would like to know uh, uh, do, do we see any more yield cuts going forward? If you could uh, give us some uh, idea on the margin trajectory from there. Yeah, so uh, as we have uh, shown in our presentation that our margins actually year on year have improved. Uh, we are operating at around 13.3% margin. Uh, our guidance for the full year is around 13%, uh, just 12.9 to 13% guidance. Uh, we maintain that we will be able to achieve those uh, margins very easily. Uh, the rate cut that we have taken uh, is a second rate cut uh, during the calendar year. In uh, uh, January, we had cut rates by 55 bips, and uh, now we recently we have cut rates by 35 bips, overall 90 bips of reduction. But despite that, we have been able to improve on our margins. Uh, the idea here is to ensure that uh, benefit of uh, lower cost of funds we are able to share with our customers and reduce their overall uh, um, like obligation and uh, burden of interest. Uh, and we believe that uh, even with the reducing uh, interest rates, uh, we will be able to maintain our margins. Uh, we definitely believe as the rate cut cycle gets implemented in India and globally, uh, the rates will come down and we will get benefit of uh, reduction in cost of fund. Uh, while we are diversifying our sources of fund also, uh, the ECB borrowing that we are doing and we will announce few more uh, transactions shortly. Uh, so those will help us to bring the cost of fund down and uh, definitely we would share some portion of that with our borrowers as well. But uh, we maintain that we will be able to uh, easily manage our uh, name set 13%. Okay, so what, what percent of our borrowings would be floating, floating rate loans? Around 40% uh, of our borrowings are on floating rate. Uh, I think that's right now paving out well because we are negotiating with banks. Uh, most of the banks, we are asking them to reduce their rates, even on the existing borrowings uh, that we have. And uh, even the new sanctions, actually the good part about ECB is that it allows us a room to negotiate. Because usually when uh, we are only dependent on bank borrowings, they are co-terminus. So we have two years of loan that we lend to our customers and we have two years of borrowing. So uh, most of our collection goes in repaying the loan. But with the ECB, uh, the repayments are tail ended. We have to repay at the end of the tenor. Only the interest has to be serviced. So we have enough cash available for us. Whatever collection comes, we can again deploy in the uh, field. So this allows us more room to negotiate with the banks. Uh, we are able to negotiate a significant number of banks and reduce uh, our cost of fund. Uh, maybe Praveen, you can add to it. Yeah, thank you, sir. So uh, uh, on the cost of funds, I think we are incrementally cost of borrowing is around 10.3%. And we expect the overall cost of fund also to come down in, in the current financial year. Uh, we uh, in the last call also we have highlighted that uh, start, uh, this year we are uh, the cost of fund will come down and we can see that it is happening in Q1 as well. And uh, going forward also there are uh, three transactions that is lined up in the current quarter, so we will be doing that and we have enough liquidity on this balance sheet as well. So as the disbursement picked up, uh, the overall liquidity uh, get utilized and that will also help us to maintain NIM. And the capital benefit also has uh, fully benefit in the current financial year. So we believe that uh, despite the, both the cuts that we have done in the current calendar year, uh, we will be able to manage uh, more than uh, in the in the range of 13 percent. Okay, okay. And uh, on the top line, uh, see, uh, secondly, congratulations on the uh, corporate agency license from IDO. Uh, so, so uh, from this, uh, from here on, how do we see the fee income? I mean, uh, uh, by what uh, tenor would we, by what time would we see the income from uh, on from this 
insurance to come in from here on so uh, we are uh, sorry uh, when we are in the process of uh, negotiating with uh, various uh, uh, insurance company we have tied up with few already as a corporate agent we have signed up the agreement uh, uh, depending upon the agreement i think uh, definitely there is a scope of around uh, 5 to 10% uh, commission income that will come through uh, this arrangement uh, we process around uh, last year we processed around close to 500 crores of insurance premium considering our 25% growth uh, we should uh, be processing somewhere around 600 or uh, 650 crores of premium this financial year uh, of course one quarter uh, we have uh, already completed but uh, we can assume around uh, 5% uh, kind of of this coming into the top line Okay, okay, great. And uh, on the asset quality front, I had uh, one data related uh, qu uh, question on the stage two provision. What is our stage two provision? And secondly, uh, uh, has the uh, Vyanard uh, uh, landslide affected our portfolio in any way? And uh, if you could throw some light over there on the on ground uh, 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 Kerala based uh, portfolio. Yeah, thank you very much for asking that question. I think uh, this is one thing that I want to inform everybody on the call. Uh, uh, we are uh, really concerned about the wide plant development, but uh, we as an entity do not have any exposure to why not. Uh, we have been prudent in that policy uh, uh, and uh, considering why not is a leaky area, we have not uh, exposed ourselves there, so we don't have any branches or portfolio there. So we are not affected, but definitely our sympathies with the people who are living there. And as a group, uh, we are taking initiatives to help the community. And uh, our Nadu Property Foundation is doing activities and uh, donating sufficient amount to uh, take care of all the challenges there. But uh, as the thing stands, uh, we don't have any exposure and any impact of why not at the moment. Uh, yeah. No, I think it was on the SMA 2. Right. Yeah, so SMA 2 provision is uh, around 35 percent. Prabir, is that correct? That's a uh, cumulative one. Uh, stage 3 is around 66 percent, but stage 2 we have a uh, percentage of uh, 78 percent. 0.78 percent. 0.78% stage 2 provision. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Stormil Shah from Paris Investments. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congrats uh, for the good set of numbers. So, I wanted to ask you looking at the current MFI industry, do you uh, really think we can maintain our guidance of 1.7 uh, to 1.9% credit cost for this year? And uh, how do you think uh, the next one, two quarters look like? Uh, I think uh, the, this quarter Q2 would uh, be definitely better than Q1. And uh, the Q3 and Q4 usually are very productive quarters. So we have taken already prudent steps to ensure that uh, the impact on the portfolio is not there uh, and everything is under control. Uh, we are uh, instituting certain uh, policy processes which will ensure that we have a better uh, kind of an outcome from our portfolio. So we are very confident that we should be able to uh, contain our credit costs uh, on uh, predicted lines. Uh, barring any new event, I think we should be able to uh, uh, achieve well within that. Uh, I think we have sufficient buffer if you look at our IRAC provision versus the ECL provision, there is all uh, almost a 100 crore buffer between the IRAC provision versus the ECL provision that is there. I think that is sufficient to take care of any uncertainty. Our provision coverage has also improved. Uh, if you look at uh, overall provision coverage, we have around 86% provision coverage. And if you look at provision standalone for stage two, stage three assets, uh, it has improved from 61% to 66%. We will continue to uh, adequately provide for all the loans, and we believe that uh, we should be able to kind of maintain within our guidance. By there is new event that comes our way. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you. My next question is on the guidance of uh, 25% AUM growth for this year. So how well are we placed to achieve this 25% growth? And uh, can we expect a similar 25% growth in bottom line or maybe even higher than that? So if you could give some uh, guidance or clarity on the same. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, in terms of our AUM growth, we are very well positioned. If you look at uh, our branch network, has expanded to uh, 1,562 branches. During the quarter, which was slightly slow on disbursement, we have still opened 54 branches. Uh, last year, we had already invested in 336 branches. Uh, so all of these new branches will uh, improve the uh, start contributing and productivity will improve. So that will definitely contribute to our growth. Uh, we will uh, easily be able to achieve 25%. We want to be prudent. We don't want to take unnecessary risk. Uh, uh, we have always believed in calibrated approach of lending. So uh, considering that uh, the Q1 disbursements were lower as compared to previous quarter and even the quarter uh, in FY24, uh, but uh, coming quarters, uh, definitely uh, with things improving, the disbursement would be in line and we should be able to achieve that 25% growth target. And uh, uh, we have predicted a uh, uh, ROA of around uh, 4.3 to 4.5. Uh, we should be able to achieve that ROA. That should not be a problem. Okay. Okay. And sir, do we have any exposure in Punjab? Uh Yes, we do have an exposure in Punjab, uh, but our exposure is very limited. Uh, we have uh, stopped disbursement some uh, uh, around nine months ago. Uh, we have uh, a total portfolio of around uh, 31 crores, uh, which was affected. Out of which 19 crore we wrote off uh, previously. Uh, around uh, 12 crore has remained, which is put into ARC. Uh, so, as such, uh, the exposure would be uh, less than around uh, uh, 2% of our portfolio. Okay, okay. Uh, that's it from my side. All the best for your future quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Ashlesh Sonjay from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. A few questions from my side. So, firstly, on the MFIN guardrails, have you already incorporated these uh, guardrails in your credit process? Uh, and uh, what do you plan to do about those customers? Uh, you said 10 to 11 percent loans will get rejected. What do you plan to do about those customers? Yes, I think uh, that's an important question to ask. Uh, one of the things that I want to uh, assure and uh, help you uh, understand is that um, uh, we have already implemented the guardrails. Uh, uh, one of the advantages uh, Matut has is that we have our own in-house technology team. We have a 100-member team uh, which has developed our LMS, LOS. So we have an agile system of uh, kind of managing our changes and uh, implementation of newer policy. So we were able to implement as soon as uh, these uh, guidelines were effect, uh, introduced, within uh, 15 days, we were able to uh, implement. So as we speak, already the uh, guidelines have been implemented into the system. So all the incremental lending which is happening is happening within those guidelines. Of course, uh, that has meant uh, a little bit more rejection. Uh, so that is why uh, we have adopted a strategy of uh, looking at a, a data scrub uh, analyzing at the actual level uh, that customers who have more than four kind of exposure and anybody who is crossing the two lakh rupees of exposures and uh, those customers are uh, already kind of uh, eliminated uh, from the dump that is to be sent to the branches for disbursement. Uh, because these guidelines are new, uh, we don't want uh, branches to miss out on anything, so that's why it is being filtered at the system level, at the actual level itself, and then the uh, loans are being, uh, the pre-approved data is being passed off. It also takes off the burden from the branch team because uh, branch can easily focus on quality business rather than looking at more new to customers, which usually come with higher risk uh, profile. So that is one thing that we have done. In terms of this uh, incremental rejection, I think they will come down as you filter the cases uh, upfront. So that percentage will come down. 
even within the those customers who are getting rejected uh, we have multiple products to offer to them uh, these are products which are within the uh, 25% non qualifying criteria so we have products like msgb uh, which is a, a gold security kind of a product where uh, customer has to keep uh, security of gold and they can still borrow uh, we have tie up uh, with uh, certain banks like uh, sidbi you know which offer larger ticket loans uh, up to around uh, 5 lakh rupees so customers who are uh, eligible uh, who have a, a sound income they might have a higher number of loans but they still have supporting income uh, they have been offered those uh, prayas loans uh, and uh, we have been able to kind of generate revenue from those customers so we are not missing out on good customers that is the strategy that we have adopted and uh, we will maybe uh, put out a data definitely there is a, a correlation between higher number of loans and delinquency but it is not uh, like 100% that entire uh, population which has more than four loan is a defaulting population so part of it may be defaulting but uh, there are a large number of customers who are also uh, worthy of higher credit and uh, collectively uh, the customer and the borrower may have more than four loans so that's why in the micro loan system they might get rejected but they are definitely worthy of credit got it sir thanks for the elaborate response sir you gave a couple of data points one is uh, that number of borrowers with more than four lenders is around 7% you also said that 10 to 11% loans will get rejected so the differential of 3 to 4% would be borrowers who have more than 200 uh, sorry 2 lakh rupees of outstanding in mfi is that right no, uh, so when I say 6.967% uh, uh, which is uh, more than a uh, core loan that is at the time of lending. Uh, so uh, when I say 11% will get rejected uh, like uh, that is on an incremental basis. So uh, this is a universe which is different because I am talking about uh, we have analyzed the disbursement of the last quarter. Uh, so whatever has been disbursed is around 11% we are uh, assuming will get rejected uh, and uh, if you look at the whole universe of our borrower, existing borrower on that 6.96% uh, uh, is having more than 4 loans that is uh, kind of uh, at the time of disbursement when we check them. So uh, not to assume that uh, the data is actually 2 lakh and all that. Uh, uh, the uh, rejection could be because of the default or any other reasons as well. Understood, sir. Friend, you also referred to some analysis to understand what proportion of those borrowers are likely to default. Have you also done a check on what proportion of your defaulting customers are actually those with more than four lenders? Yeah, we have done that analysis. Uh, we'll put out that data. That's why I was saying that uh, it's not necessarily a direct correlation. Uh, that if you have more than four loans, then uh, you are bound to default. Uh, there are customers who have evolved with us over a period of time, and they have uh, gone from a, a GSG borrower to an individual borrower, and they have a higher repayment capacity and a higher uh, kind of an exposure. So those borrowers are pretty good borrowers. So we'll put out that data. Uh, I don't have that handy right now, but we'll put out that data. Thank you, sir. sir the question was actually the other way around. Uh, I was asking what would be the proportion of your defaulting borrowers who would be uh, who would have more than four lenders because the uh, what I'm trying to understand is uh, if I remove all those over leveraged borrowers out what is the potential of defaults coming from the other set of borrowers which is who don't have more than four lenders yeah, so uh, I, I would simply say that I don't have that data right now. I'll uh, maybe okay. share that data with you separately. Perfect, sir. Sorry, sorry. Uh, one more question, if you allow me. Uh, you spoke about adding uh, an additional credit officer at the. Sorry, you have already had the uh, the credit officer at the branch level uh, for checking the obligations of the household. Can you just explain his role a bit more? Uh, because from what I understand, the credit bureau would already report all the household level obligations, right? Yeah, the obligation definitely comes from the uh, credit bureau report, uh, but also. 
uh, in the credit uh, officer there also checks about any other obligation that uh, the borrower has which is from an informal segment uh, that is not getting reported to the credit bureau that is one piece apart from that the most important piece is to establish the income that the customer is uh, reporting so uh, if she is claiming that she has a 2 lakh 50000 rupees or a 3 lakh rupees of annual income uh, the credit officer does a personal discussion does a house visit to understand whether she has an income source and whether she is able to generate income we have a well established mechanism uh, we as i explained we can take three sets of income one is the customer declared income second is uh, customer calculated by imputed margin which the credit officer does and then the third is the credit bureau reported income and lower of the three we take as an income of the household and based on that the eligibility of the client is calculated so this is a very important role that the credit officer plays uh, doing a personal discussion and also doing the house visit he is also responsible for ensuring that uh, the loan utilization that is the purpose of the loan is correctly captured if the customer is saying that she is borrowing the money for buying a sewing machine or uh, like any sort of a cattle so when he does the house visit uh, he is able to identify whether that customer is actually having that kind of a business or uh, she is just putting that reason just as a excuse for borrowing this money so it is a pretty important role in terms of filtering out uh, wrong elements that is coming in thank you sir this was very useful good luck for the next few quarters thank you thank you before we take the next question would like to remind participants to press star and 1 to ask a question next question is from the line of chirag singhal from first water fund please go ahead yeah uh, am i audible yes yes you are yeah thanks for taking a question so just two simple questions uh, and apologies if uh, those are questions uh, first was in the digital collections so uh, what are the measures you are taking to increase the digital collection share and if you can also give some guidance as to what this digital collection uh, will look like over the course of next two years yeah thank you uh, sir for asking that question i think one of the key differentiator that uh, masoos microphone has as compared to all the other players is the uh, 26% digital collection that we have and uh, that uh, 26% digital collection when we talk about is the direct money that is coming out of the customer's bank account or customer's wallet to our bank account that is a great initiative that has been possible because of the customer app that we have uh, uh, created so we have our own in house developed app mathoot mahila mitra uh, which is uh, downloaded by uh, 1.66 million customers around 1.7 million now uh, and this is being used to digitize our collection so uh, this is the most important tool Uh, which is uh, helping us uh, digitize collection one of the things that we are doing uh, is uh, to ensure the use of this app is more and this app becomes the primary app for the customer to use so we are contemplating an uh, integration of this app with the uh, car super app at the uh, mathoot hold co level uh, mathoot 1 and 1 uh, that integration happens then the customer would have access to multiple services uh, including remittances buying gold uh, buying uh, any other kind of a loan or uh, insurance and multiple other products so the effort is to make it more useful for the customer so that she continues to transact through this and that is what is helping us to improve our digital collection apart from that Uh, we have conducted uh, uh, awareness exercises uh, to our customers to ensure that digital collection is taken uh, place uh, it's more than a process change it is uh, a change in the behavior of the customer the customer has been used to paying cash to change the behavior of the customer from uh, paying cash to digital we have to kind of incentivize the customer so we also pay 10 rupee cash back for the customers who are paying uh, digital for the first time and uh, we also explain the advantage of digital collection or to our field officer because uh, 
uh, of the digital collection, the productivity of the field staff is uh, improving. Uh, he doesn't have to collect money, go to the uh, uh, bank and deposit that money. Instead, the money comes directly into our bank account, so it improves the uh, uh, like kind of work environment for the uh, our field officer. Also, uh, we operate mostly in rural area. 96% of our branches are in rural area. Usually, carrying high cash is a risky proposition in rural area. So, we also tell our field officer the more digital collection you do, less risk you are taking on yourself. You don't have to worry about uh, carrying cash. So, that is another way to incentivize them to uh, do more digital. And overall, I think uh, we feel that it is moving in the right direction. Uh, we should be able to uh, go this year around 30 plus percent uh, in terms of digital collection by end of the financial year, definitely. Great. Uh, thanks for the uh, elaborate answer. Uh, so, my second question is on the collection efficiency. Uh, so, what led to a sharp decline in the non southern region? And since we have reaffirmed uh, the F525 guidance in the TPT, just wanted to understand what kind of Hello. Yeah. Hello. I'm audible. Yes, Mr. Singh. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. 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 Sorry. So, uh, just wanted to understand that since we've already reaffirmed the FI25 housing, uh, 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 is it fair to assume that uh, we have seen a significant improvement in the collection efficiency across the regions in the coming quarter? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, as I explained, uh, uh, there is an element of uh, the events that happened in the Q1, especially the Karza Mukti Andolan and uh, uh, elections. Uh, because of elections, it's not a customer's kind of a default, but because we are not allowed to conduct central meeting and uh, gathering too many people, there is an impact on collections. In certain places, even the cash gets confiscated because of the HR Sanita, the election code of conduct which is uh, deployed, and that gets released. We received a lot of cash in uh, July, for that matter, uh, which was held by the uh, local agencies uh, because of uh, cash was not allowed to be uh, carried at that point of time. So uh, uh, that had impacted a little bit on the collection efficiency. That definitely has tapered down. Having said that, uh, there was an impact of monsoon also, excessive rain. Uh, that uh, has played out in by and large uh, now. Uh, I don't expect too much of heavy rain, though there is prediction in north for heavy rains uh, even now. So I, I don't see that will impact uh, too much. It's only a, uh, a transitional phase. And if you look at uh, the past years also, July, August, usually the collection dips uh, because of heavy rains. Uh, the ability of the ROs to reach uh, the places also, the center meeting attendance 